Okay, churn rate, very important, especially for subscription-based businesses, for the likes of Netflix, Amazon Prime, YouTube Premium, anything you're paying a monthly subscription of, you are going to hear the term churn. That is the rate at which people leave. You need this number to be a net positive, not net negative. For example, if I have 10 subscribers every day joining, but five decide to leave, I am net positive five. Therefore, I'm gaining five subscribers every day. It doesn't matter if people are leaving, I'm still net positive and I'm still going to be gaining customers and I'm going to be increasing my revenue. With regards to subscribers, OnlyFans is a subscriber-based business. So churn rate is very important. And with the business, it's important to keep churn rate very low. Why? Because a very important rule. It is much easier to sell to someone that you've already sold to rather than convince a new customer to join. So it would be a lot harder to incentivize someone to join YouTube Premium given the, the fact that they haven't experienced how useful it is rather than someone who's already on the platform and they know how valuable it is not to have ads, to be able to lock your screen and listen to music, listen to podcasts, whatever it is. They know how valuable it is. So they value that product more. It is much harder to convince someone who doesn't know the full extent of how good YouTube Premium is when they haven't used it. So this is something you need to consider. Part one. Part two, things to mitigate churn. You want to keep churn as low as possible, but you want to focus on the people that have spent as much money. So you want to focus on the most valuable customers when it comes down to who you want to save. If you only have a lifeboat and you can only fit 10 people on, obviously you want the richest and wealthiest, just like fucking Titanic. They kept the fucking richest, all the poor people died. That's what matters. You want the most valuable customers on your lifeboat. So things to mitigate churn. Number one is you are going to increase the amount of attention towards the end of the uh, billing period. So let's say their subscription ends at the end of the month. Keep it very simple. You want to increase attention as the month comes to a close. You want to give them more attention. You want to give them more freebies. You want to incentivize them with more offers. So if you're offering a sex tape at the end of the month, you might want to throw in a solo masturbation clip, something like that. If they're valuable customers, you want to keep them around. And when you know they like a particular thing, so let's say they only like buying sex tapes out. No, actually, I'll change it around. They only like solo tapes. Some guys are in love with the girl and they don't actually enjoy seeing them get fucked by other people. You might give them solo clips. And even though you know they're not going to buy the sex tape, you can throw in the sex tape as a gift because you know they're not going to buy it. But in their eyes, they see that as they're getting something for free and they are being treated special, they are being singled out because they have a good relationship with the client. That is something you can do to reduce churn. Increasing your attention is very important. The more you talk to them, and I'm not talking about sex, and I'm talking about daily chat as similar to girlfriend experience, but they need to be tipping. You need to be getting paid for your time. You can't be endlessly talking to them because then they're getting more out of you than you are of them. And that is not how you operate this business. That's part two. Step three, step-by-step -step content plan to reduce churn. There's gonna be a few steps in this. Step number one is the first point of contact, which will be the welcome message. This is very important. I see a lot of people write out paragraphs for this or essays way too long, and it's just bulky paragraphs. It's very difficult to read. They put in emojis. They put in the emojis where there's letters inside them. It looks very untidy. It looks messy and it just stresses me out. If I were to see that, if I was a paying customer, it would piss me off. So I don't want that. I want something that looks natural, something that looks like it was written by a fucking woman and not an autistic fucking Indian, all right? Nothing against Indians, but it's just like, it's like someone who doesn't speak English properly and they're trying to spice it up a little. It just doesn't make sense. Nothing against Indians. But with regards to the first message, it is very important. This is what you're going to do. Scrap the long paragraphs, scrap the PPVs where you insert a PPV, you might have a picture or a video and then it's gonna be a PPV. I don't like that. What I like doing is having a short text, maybe one to two lines, that's it. And then you have a, a video attached. This video is going to be tailored to the creator. So if your creator is a yoga instructor, you might have in the video, she could say, hi, how are you? Thanks so much for subscribing. What's your favorite yoga pose that I do? It's going to be tailored to the creator. If she's a ballerina, what's my favorite dance move? If she's an anime character, what's your favorite outfit on me? You get what I mean? What's your favorite cosplay outfit? 
this is what you're going to do. You're going to ask your favorite thing about them. And if they lead it to a sexual topic, you're good to go, especially if you catch them online, because they're usually ready in hand with their fucking dick. They're, they're good to go. If they start talking about something more safe for work, you can naturally guide the conversation to a sexual topic later. Just go with the flow. But you need to ask the fan what they care or what they like about with regards to the creator, because this is going to give you a stepping stone. It's going to tell you the direction you need to take the chat. Number two, daily videos. These are going to be safe for work and they're very simple. You need to get your creator into a habit of doing little videos. These can be as simple as going to the gym, taking a dog for the walk, going and getting Starbucks. Oh, I got a new flavor in Starbucks today. Tell the fucking fans what it is. It's just a, a conversation starter. Send it and then when you send it, you can say, oh, I'm home now or I'm at the hotel or I'm just in the change rooms, whatever it is. You need to, when they reply, you need to make sure that you are home because in two minutes, the whole conversation could flip where they're ready to have sex or not sex, but they're ready to have a wank and they want to come. So you can run a script, which means you need to be home to make it make sense. So make sure when you send out those messages, those are conversation starters that are totally safe for work. Then you try to run a script. It's just to get their attention, but it's a fantastic way of getting their attention. You're not ramming PPVs down their throat. You're not saying fucking, hey baby, I'm so horny. It just doesn't, I hate that shit, man. Go on to an OnlyFans, make an OnlyFans account, right? And subscribe to 100 or not, you don't have to subscribe to 100. I subscribe to a shit ton because you, you need to see what the competition is. Subscribe to 30, 30 OnlyFans accounts and look at the fucking disgrace of the messages that they send out with the emojis. It's just like, oh, I can't believe I came so hard earlier. Man, girls don't talk like that. Make it fucking natural. Make it seem genuine. That's where you want to get the fucking big money. These guys are fucking... They're not that retarded. Some of them are, but Jesus Christ, give them some credit. Where am I? More attention closer to renewal. So I've briefly touched this topic in part two. More attention towards the end of their subscription. So if their subscription is running out in a week, you need to increase the attention that you're going to be giving them. Now, this is very important if I would say they've already bought content. If they haven't bought content and you have three, 4,000 fans, it's going to be impossible to manage this. But with uh, Chattersoft or OF Buddy, uh, fucking Super Creator, all those, you can see how much money they've spent, the LTV of the customer. If they've spent some sort of money, or you can just tag it in their name. Once you know when they renew, you can put it in their name and it's easy to see. Um, but you need to increase the attention. You can only do this with people that have spent money. Otherwise, you, you'll fucking, you'll be at it all day. Focus on people that have already spent money and give them more attention closer to their renewal. They might catch on, but at the end of the day, you need money. That's it. Uh, feedback, tailor content. So what this means is when you have a customer that is spending money regularly, you can tailor the content that you're going to make for the OnlyFans to the high spenders. So let's say you have a guy that spent three grand in the last month. That's a good number. That's a very good lifetime value of a customer. If everyone spent that on you, you'd be fucking doing very well. You can tailor content for him. You're not going to give him all the content. For example, let's say your creator or the fan, sorry, has a foot fetish and he's spending money regularly. He's spending like 1500, 750 a week. He's spending a lot of money and you know he likes feet. What you can do is you can start extracting information from him, things that he likes. He might like red nails. He might like fishnets. He might like knee high socks. There's particular things that he might like. You are going to tailor your content on your OnlyFans, so the main feed content to that, but it's, it's going to be very safe for work. It's obviously some of them are going to be fucking be able to wank off, but you want to save the PPVs for him because you know he's going to spend it, especially if he likes it. And if he likes that content, you're going to be able to charge more. Some guy might be happy to pay $25 for a foot job. Another guy might be able to fucking pay 300 and is happy to pay that. So you need to tailor content for the people that spend a lot more money on you because you know by keeping them happy, giving them free bits of content that are in the direction of what they want and then selling them the big books with the fucking PPV of actually like what they really, really want. You're going to have a really good relationship with these people and they're going to stay because you are tailoring the content to what they enjoy. That's something to note. 
I'm not just to be very clear now before someone fucking says anything do not ask a guy what he wants do a PPV or do something like that and then just give it to him don't fucking do that that's retarded offer long term deals you see this all the time you can offer three six month subscriptions at a discount if someone buys it you can offer them a gift especially if they're already a subscriber they might have subscribed for their first month they might have subscribed or fucking spent a hefty buck you can tell them look if you get the next three months or the next six months i'll send you this very subtly that is part three okay part four this is going to be very similar to part three but this is sub retention there is three pillars to be successful about keeping subscribers now remember it is very important to keep subscribers rebilling or renewing their membership. Why? It's because it's going to be a lot easier to sell something to them than it is to convince a new subscriber to come all the way from TikTok, then to Instagram, then to your OnlyFans, then toy, toy around with them a bit and then fucking sell them something. It's much easier to sell to someone that's already been on the OnlyFans and he's ready to go. He knows he's got a taste for what he's going to get. So with sub retention, number one, Increase attention towards the end of the renewal. Number two, tailor your content. Make sure you tailor content for the big spenders. And number three for sub retention is daily content. That's going to be free, no PPV. So this daily content, like I already mentioned, is going to be daily clips, anything. It can be literally anything. She could be in the gym and she records a set and like this, it's not a TikTok, there's no music. It's literally her recording a video and she's sending it out. These styles of videos these types of videos do really well the more content that you can give them for free the more value they feel like they're doing or the more value they feel like they're getting from the girl which is what you want you want good value in their eyes because then they're going to be much happier spending a higher dollar for the custom content the ppv content the scripts if they feel like they get a lot in return they're much happier to spend a higher book so that's number four Winning back lost subs, this is going to be part five. Now with this strategy, you are going to need some sort of software or you're gonna to have to get your chatters to do it where you follow the subscribers. So when someone subscribes to your OnlyFans, you need to follow them back. Therefore, if they unsubscribe to you, you still have a method to contact them. That's very important. Now, with regards to winning back lost subs, there's a few things you can do. Very simply, number one is offer them a free trial. So you can get them back in for a week, in for two days, anything to potentially get some money. Or you can offer them, if they put Renew back on, if they subscribe, you can offer them a free video. You can ask them what they want, and if they subscribe, you can give them the video. Number three is if they buy content, you will give them a free sub for the month, and you can do some sexy. Just incentivize them with some sort of deal, but don't be given too much away. You need to get some sort of money from them then you can make the next decision on how you're going to play it or how much you're going to charge them for example with regards to the last point i said if you offer them back with content so let's say you buy this uh video that's in the messages already because remember you have access to them they buy the content it could be a ppv sex tape they buy the content it's 75 dollars you say, when you buy that content, we can offer, or I will offer you a free script. You're not obviously going to say that, but you're going to say, uh, we can sext for free. You are going to start running through the script. So when they buy the PPV, you're like, okay, baby, you can have that for later, but I want to have some fun with you now. This is what you do. You start running through the script. Now remember, in a script, you should have free pieces of content that you um, have at the beginning that you don't charge for start running through the script as you normally would text with them send them the content the videos and the pictures but don't charge for anything like you normally would for a script now when it comes to the first part of the script that you would normally sell content for this is what i've done in the past and it usually leads to a sale what you can do is give that one for free but it's not going to be anything special. it's usually a strip tease from the clothes down to lingerie or the lingerie down to being naked but there's no there's nothing serious going on she's not playing with herself you can send that one for free get him really in the mood then you can start selling the rest of the script but lower your prices this has is what worked for me it, it works really well this works 
for getting subscribers back on your site. So having them pay for your subscriptions, having them consume more content, as well as subscribers that used to spend money but now don't spend money and you want to get the ball back rolling. That is a good strategy that I've implemented. If they buy a PPV, and it has to be a good PPV, it can't be a fucking picture for $5, that makes no fucking sense. It has to be at least over $40 or $50 for a PPV. Then offer them to sext for free. You run through the script as you normally would, give the first bit of PPV content that's attached to the script for free. Then start working through it as you normally would, charging prices but lower your prices. Try get them to subscribe back to the page that way. So they have a serious wank, they're happy, and they remember how fucking glorious and fucking beautiful you are, and they're back paying as a fucking normal subscriber. Their subscription and renew on is fucking back to normal. So that is part five, and that concludes churn.